Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all having the best day. So today I'm really excited to bring you a part review, part vlog style video. Over the new year, I went on my first ever cruise. Now I'm 27 and to be honest, a cruise isn't necessarily the first thing I think about when choosing to go away. Like I'm normally thinking about, you know, going on a plane somewhere. But I went on a cruise for the first time ever and I thought I would share my views on it. So obviously, and I've mentioned this in a previous video, cruising seems to have this stigma around it where everyone is older and there's nothing wrong with that at all. But I think that it's kind of have, have this reputation of it being for people who maybe have retired, um, you know, they're not, they can go away for longer periods. From my experience, like it's something I would do. And I'm not ashamed to say that. <laughs> we went on a New Year's cruise with p &O, and we went on a ship called Arcadia. Now my parents, um, they've been cruising before, so they know the deal. And they were the one that suggested about doing this. And we thought, yeah, go away for New Year's. What a great idea, because it's so expensive to go out in the UK. I don't know what it's like elsewhere, but going out in the UK at New Year is just so expensive. And so we were like, okay, so for a little bit more, we can actually have a holiday. So this cruise went to Hamburg and it also went to Bruges in Belgium. And these were two places that we'd really, we really, really wanted to go to. And also the fact that, you know, still have some Christmassy vibes going on. I'm all about a Christmas market. And so I was really excited to give it a go. So I'm just gonna share my thoughts about what we did, what we liked, what maybe wasn't so good, and also put in some little snippets of footage as well. Now I did, my intention was to do this as a proper travel vlog. However, some things happened on the trip that kind of stopped us doing that, and I will get to that. So what you do is when you first go on a cruise is you head down to obviously where the boat is going from. Now you can do like fly cruises where you fly to the location and then go to the port. We went from Southampton. So all we did was we drove down the day before. We stayed at Holiday Inn, which was like super near the terminal. And then we went to the terminal basically on the day and on the time that we were supposed to be going. We, you know, left our car and we had a looked after for us by a set by a company a lot of people use that if so if you're worried about like driving down where you're going to put your car there are companies that have like proper like security parking places and they'll literally like take your car and then it you'll get to collect it at the end of your cruise so we went there and we went into like this terminal building and it was a bit busier than my parents say it normally is but obviously because it was a new year's cruise it was probably going to be really popular i think from the what people were saying it was that it was completely full because normally you can get like an upgrade if you go and ask you might get an upgrade of your room and they actually had a sign on the reception desk saying oh, we can't upgrade anyone because we are full so that was how popular it was so we went into the terminal building it was really smooth it was really orderly like you know how like an airport it can be a little bit chaotic this was lovely like you know people were like telling you where to go and what to do and everyone was really friendly and then we basically sat in this big kind of um waiting area and you get you board in like groups and you go through and you have to do some security like you 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 have to put out like your devices and stuff but you don't have to do liquids and then you're allowed to board which is really cool um and then what you do is is you end up having this like cruise card thing and that's basically like your id so you use it when you leave the ship and get back on as a form of id you can link a card onto it so that's how you pay for like your drinks and stuff which is dangerous but also a really cool idea because then you don't have to worry about you know charges on your card i mean all of it is done in pound sterling anyway but it's just a really easy thing to have and you can literally just like give it over and leave it back and it also ha that also gets you into your room as well so it's just an all-in-one really awesome handy thing to have and you get that when you get to your room so you we boarded the ship which was very exciting um and you have to first go to your muster station and that's basically where you go if there's oh please don't tell me the sun's gonna start to come out and blind me here we go here's the sun here comes here comes the Na, 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 na. You have to go to your master station basically to know where to go if there is an emergency. You get told that 
pretty much straight away when you um, have all the information of like where you have to go. So you just go there straight away and normally there's like people to help guide you to that place. Yeah, and then we went to our room. So we decided to go for a large inside cabin. Now we were thinking about maybe having a outside cabin but because it was a New Year's cruise and it was a shorter cruise, it was a lot more expensive to go for an outside room or a balcony. And to be honest, the inside large rooms are massive. <laughs> I didn't realize how big it was gonna be until I got into the room. So I'll insert a little clip here of um, being in the room. Okay, so first of all, on the left, when you come in the door, you've got this lovely like corner sofa area with a little table. And then over here, you've got like the TV bit and you've got uh, lots of information in that little left-hand stacky bit. Teas, coffees, biscuits, kettle, all that fun stuff. Now, this is where it gets hilarious because the camera doesn't want to focus. <laughs> um, but basically, you've got loads of storage in these cupboards. They're really deep. Um, in that one at the bottom, you've got um, a hairdryer and um, a Bible as well. Um, I love the little lights around the mirror. They were really handy. You could hand turn them on with the switches that were on there. You got a little bin as well, uh, which was useful, obviously. And then the TV, you got different stations on there, and like uh, you can watch the weather, you can watch where everything's at. The other one, um, this is all at like, the wardrobe space. Look at this. Um, the fridge is in the little uh, cupboard by the um, TV. I couldn't get to that because I put my bags there. That was silly. Look, look at all this space. This is mad. Um, obviously, this is just for the inside room. You got laundry bags down there loads of hangers, um, really good mirrors as well. Um, this was a good one um, as well. We kind of had one each basically, which was lovely. Then you've got a little chair here, um, which was you kind of use for putting stuff on. Um, hooks, got a, a hooks and a painting, which was very nice. The bed was delightful. Um, I had a big, uh, big bed, another hook over there. And then into the kitch, kitchen, the bathroom even, um, and we got a nice shower there. It was, I would say it was pretty good size. I didn't have to move around too much. Um, you got a uh, white company products. You got about two sets of towels, uh, the bathroom and the, the toilet with the bin. Um, yeah. And then this bit was really nice and big. Lots of storage in this bit as well. It's just, it was just really big. It was just, it was perfect for what we wanted. And to be honest, because I, I don't get seasick, but I get vertigo, it's like from the movement of the ship. It was almost better the fact that I was in an inside room because I couldn't see the horizon literally doing this. <laughs> That's something to think about. If you are, if you do get seasick easily, a cruise is probably not a thing for you. The thing that I found really, really good was I took motion sickness tablets pretty much from the first day. I made the mistake of not taking it straight away which meant the evening meal that we had in the evening got interrupted by me, my head just doing this. <laughs> as soon as I was on the tablets, and I also had those like um, motion sickness band things, I was absolutely fine, um, which surprised me because I thought I was gonna be much worse and I was a little bit worried about that. So if you only get slight seasickness or you just get a bit of vertigo, take the pills straight away and you'll be fine. So after we went to our room, we also had a little explore of the ship and this is just such a pretty ship. It's just beautiful. So it was all kind of art deco style decor, which I personally absolutely love. I'm a big fan of vintage fashion and vintage style, especially art deco. Like I love art deco, um, like houses and, um, furniture and kind of glass and all that sort of thing from that period. I just think it's beautiful. So for me, I absolutely loved it. Obviously it's not gonna be to everyone's taste, but to be honest, I'm like, it's elegant, it's beautiful. Like I don't know, you know, why someone would necessarily be offended by it. Go away, son, no, go away. And also as well, Arcadia is like a medium sized ship in the PMO fleet. So you've got Aurora, which is one of the smaller ones. And then you've got like the really big ones, like the new, like Iona and Ventura. And I think it's called Avia. I think that's the new one. Arcadia felt like a really good size. Like it felt like we were somewhere, not just like a tiny ship. I mean, I don't think, I, if I went on Aurora, I don't think it would necessarily be a really small ship because it's not a small ship. <laughs> but basically it just felt, it felt like 
It felt like there were still places to go and you didn't feel like you were seeing the same people again and again. I mean, you do. It's really funny. There's some people that you see like one time and then you never see again for the whole cruise. And then there's some people that you just keep seeing. But normally, like, it's just in passing. Like, it's not like you're stuck in an elevator with them or, you know, you, you keep bumping into them and you can't get away if you don't want to talk, if that makes sense. I mean, to be honest, most people were really, really nice that we ended up chatting to. And I think that's the thing as well, like it was, when it came to like the age group of people on board, it was a really nice mix. I would say like about 50% were maybe kind of 60 plus, and then the rest of the 50% was a really nice mix. There were a fair few people of like in their 20s. There were some that were younger, I, can, I could definitely tell. There were some like 18 year olds. And it was just really nice because it just felt like you were on holiday you didn't feel like you were you like were the odd one out or anything like that which was really nice so yeah we explored the ship it's got 11 floors and there's just so much to do there are so many bars to go to there's even a pub which is called the rising sun which we absolutely loved because it was like a it was like a nice country pub um and we went there on new year's eve and that was really cool and there was like a busker you've also got like kind of more kind of swanky bars to drink in our favorite one is called the crow's nest which is basically i think it's at the, is it the front of the ship i think it's the front of the ship and it's it it has like these windows which kind of curve like that and then they're slanted and you can just look out to see and it's just stunning and like the like green has comfy sofas and armchairs and they have a space for like a band to play and also if uh, someone playing the piano as well so there's lots of different options of places to go for a drink um and as well like places to eat so there's like a main dining area which is split onto two levels so there is the um kind of freedom dining which is on deck two and then the select dining which is on deck three so basically there are two options for eating in the main dining area the freedom dining as i mentioned you can go whenever you want to go however you may have to queue because obviously you have to wait for a table some people are able to like there's like an app um and you can well, it's not like an app it's like a web page when you connect to the ship's wi-fi which is like the basic wi-fi you connect to that web page and you can like book restaurants and you can book excursions you can do all sorts of things on there so the freedom dining is a bit hit and miss and also as well if you don't want to share a table with people because they obviously have big tables for bigger parties but if you are a, a pair for example you may have to wait a little bit longer for a table whereas if you have chosen the select fair when you are booking you can basically have you have a time slot of when you go and there's like an early sitting and a late sitting i think the early sitting is about 6 30 and then the late sitting is about 8 30 and we were on the late sitting which was perfect because we could like go for a drink we didn't have to rush necessarily if we were out um to get ready and we could just kind of yeah enjoy our time before dinner which was really nice or if we were in a bit of rush we were like okay fine we won't go for a drink we'll just go straight to eat and there was only a couple of times where we had to queue outside and i think that was just because they were getting everything ready they don't let people in i don't think before bang on 8 30. so it just means that you get to go and then you get to walk straight to your seat um and there was a little bit of confusion on the first night because normally apparently they give you your table number in your little slot outside your room and i don't think anyone had it or some people didn't have it so when we got there we had it's almost like you had to check in like with a reservation normally the idea is is this you know your table number and you can just walk straight into the restaurant so there was a bit of a hold up on the first night but it's fine because then after that we could just walk straight to our table um and we had the same table and the same waiters who were lovely um and we got to know them and they got to know us and they got to know our likes and our dislikes and it was just lovely because it made the whole dining experience so much nicer so i might as well touch on the food now because i've been talking about the dining so we decided to eat in the mdr the main dining area every night we were thinking about going to some of the other restaurants now there are two there's two other like main dining restaurants on board and you have to pay like a little surcharge so you normally on a cruise everything is included food wise but because these were like speciality restaurants you had to pay i think it was like seven pounds a head or you paid per dish um on certain 
things on the menu. We actually decided not to do that, mainly because it was impossible to get booked on. <laughs> like we tried to book it on the thing and it just would never show up. And just because we were really enjoying the food, like the food was so varied every night. There would maybe like be one or two repetitions, but it was like if you, if you go to a restaurant at home, you don't expect the menu to change every single night. And if you're going abroad and you're going to a favorite restaurant every night, you're not going to have different food on the menu every single night. So the fact that they changed the majority of the menu was really cool. Like you, and I got to try some really awesome stuff. Like I got to try turbot, which is a fish, which is super expensive. I had caviar on one night, which I'm like, I'm not necessarily gonna buy that on my own if I go to a restaurant. So the fact that I got to try that, and I didn't have to pay anything extra and worry about wasting food if I didn't like it. If you don't like food, you can just say to your waiter and they'll go and get you something else and it's not an issue. The nice thing as well is that on these celebration nights, they have these like big celebration nights and it's normally every five days, or every week, I think, if you're on a longer cruise. So we obviously only had one on our cruise. Um, everyone gets dressed up in their finery and you have a five or six course dinner and it is just awesome. And that's what we had on New Year's Eve. Uh, but I'll cover up that in a minute. So for us, the dining experience was really good and the portion sizes were great. Some people complained that the portion sizes were too small. The other people in my party, some of them eat a lot more than me and they were absolutely fine. I mean, to be honest, if you are hungry after your meal, you can go to the buffet, which is the next thing I'm talking about. So the buffet pretty much goes on the whole time, 24 hours, nearly 24 hours. Um, there's like an hour, I think it's like five till six where they change over from like lunch and mid afternoon to dinner. And that is the place you can get so much. And um, depending on what the state is with kind of um, like norovirus and things like that, you can either, you either serve yourself or you get served, which is great. And if you want more, then you can just go up and get more. Like it's, you could eat to your heart's content. So like, you know, if you really were hungry after eating in the main dining area, you could go to the buffet. <laughs> and get more food. Also as well, there's a brilliant grill by the pool called the Neptune Grill, which oh wow, is like your normal burgers, your chips, your hot dogs. They had like a special every day, like two specials I think. And the, oh, I had this most amazing nacho hot dog. So it was like a hot dog, onions, and then it had uh, guacamole, salsa, um, nacho cheese, and then like crushed nachos on the top and it was chef's kiss. <laughs> So all in all, like the food was phenomenal. Like you can easily enjoy yourself and your stomach to have a great time. <laughs> Another thing you can do is get room service. So you get free breakfast room service if you want it every day, apart from the day that you depart. And you just put out your little thing the night before. It's more of like a continental thing. So you can get like mueslis and pastries and things like that and yogurts, which is what we did pretty much every day, mainly because we could book a time slot. If we were going on an excursion, we could book it for, so we had breakfast before we went and we didn't have to rush and go to the buffet and things like that. And it was just a great way of doing it. You can get room service and just, and generally, and the prices are ridiculous. Like you can get a sandwich. I mean, I, I, this is not necessarily specific, but you could get some things for like a pound and it would be like, you know, fairly substantial. I think the most expensive thing was a big sharing thing, which was about seven pounds. But like for room service, that's ridiculously good. <laughs> we spent our first sea day, which was our first proper day on board, just exploring the ship, just going around, seeing what was about. Um, we'd had a little walk through when we first got there on the ship, but it was nice just to go around a, a bit more calm and just see what was there and just explore properly. The thing I loved was that it was decked up for Christmas, which just made my heart so happy. Even after, because it was like a New Year's cruise, they still had all the decks up. It just made it really special. Um, and there were like garlands on the handrails and there were Christmas trees. And it was just really nice just to walk around and still be in that festive vibe. The other thing I forgot to say as well, they also have a cafe on board. They have a Costa Coffee on board. So if you wanna go and get, you obviously you get, you pay for that extra, but if you wanna go get a Costa Coffee, you can. There are also like cinemas on board and there's a theater. Like 
there's just so much to do on your C days. There are also loads of classes and talks and things that are going on um, throughout the day, every day, apart from again, the day that you disembark. And you get basically, it's called the Horizon. It's like a magazine and it has the schedule for the day. So the nice thing is, is that you don't have to feel like you have to do things. The stuff is there if you wanna do it and you can do anything from like deck games to dance classes to fitness classes to like art archery like there's just so much to do and you're kind of a bit sport for choice but it's nice because you know it's there but you know that if you don't want to do that you don't have to do that so let's have a little talk about excursions because this was an interesting one for us let's talk about hamburg first so we decided to book excursions for all of the stops that we had and the first one we chose for Hamburg was a three point stop. So we would get dropped off at three locations. You have some time to walk around. The thing that we realized, we thought that a four hour trip would be plenty. That's not including your travel time into Hamburg. And that was something that kind of affected the time of how long we were gonna be there. The tour guide was absolutely brilliant. She was ace, but we felt that like the places that we got dropped off were just there just wasn't much to do the first one we were dropped off we were dropped off in like the dock area where there is stuff to do but first of all a lot of places didn't open till 10 o'clock and secondly places that i actually really wanted to go to like the maritime museum there's like the miniature wonderland um which is like i think they're the world's biggest miniature like not village, it's not even a village it's like a world I know it sounds really bizarre, but it's one of those things that just looked really cool. The, the time that it would take them to go around those places, we wouldn't have had long enough because we only had 25 minutes around there. So we just kind of felt a bit stuck. We walked around, we took some pictures, it was a bit rainy. It didn't feel like a waste of time, but it just felt like it could have been, they could, we could have been taken to a place where there was more things to do at that time of day. So we were a bit disappointed with that. And then the second stop we had, again, it was um, more of like the harbour area. It's where the old elf tunnel is. We did end up doing that and that was really cool. But we were there for an hour. I think it was even over an hour. I can't, I think it was like just over an hour. And that, the tunnel took us maybe 20 minutes and it's it is fascinating because basically they built this tunnel to help people get from the main part of hamburg to the dock area um for workers and it helped meant that they could travel there quicker and they didn't have to get boats across and they didn't have to build a bridge and that was really cool we really enjoyed that the rest of it again there wasn't really much to do we couldn't walk too far away because then we'd be late coming back and like there was a hard rock cafe there they were like go to the hard rock cafe and we were like mm, okay but also it was closed which was even <laughs> which was even more hilarious was the fact that they highlighted or maybe you can go to the hard rock cafe and it was closed <laughs> and then the third stop we had was in the center of hamburg now to me that was the best bit i mean we could have we could have spent more time there we could have gone to some of the churches and things like that. I mean, the main thing that we wanted to do was to go around the shops and buy, get some food because we were quite hungry. And also just to like buy some gifts and have a little mooch around. And that was really nice. So that third stop was really good. However, it was, it was just a shame because we felt like we just didn't really get to experience Hamburg properly. Um, I, in just in general, I personally prefer Berlin to Hamburg. Um, the other thing that was really disappointing as well was that the, and this was totally our fault, not for necessarily checking, was that the Christmas market that was there was closed. Now, a lot of Christmas markets stay open, especially like in the UK, but also in other places, stay open until about January, all like Christmas attractions, whereas this was done, this was closed, and I have a feeling it was like the day before we came. <laughs> But that was our fault. That was our fault for not doing the research. What would have been better if we'd have done the shuttle service? Now, you can get a shuttle service into um, certain places when you are on a cruise. However, the shuttle service doesn't necessarily take you into the places where you want to be on every single port. So with the Hamburg one, it would have taken us into the center and we could have gone and spent a bit more time in the center doing the things that we wanted to do. 
So I think in hindsight, and I didn't know that you could find this out beforehand until I was speaking to my parents and they said, yeah, you can just like Google what the shuttle service is and where it goes. So I think in that respect, I would, unless you want to do something specific in Hamburg, because there are other trips, but we wanted to do some free time stuff. I would recommend maybe doing the shuttle service because you could go in and then there's like a, you have to get the last one out and they tell you what time that is and there's like a meeting point. So I think in that respect, that's what we would do in the future. However, in the um, situation of when we went to Bruges, we're really glad we did the trip we did. When we went to Bruges, we decided to do again an excursion and this one was an eight hour free time in Bruges. So basically they drop you about half, not even half an hour, like 20 minutes from the center, it's like a 20 minute walk from the center of Bruges, from the market square. And you get to walk through the most beautiful streets in Bruges. It was all Christmassy, there was music playing. It was just the, the best time in Bruges. And the thing about that was, was that we got to spend a really good amount of time doing the things we wanted to do. Everything was really close. And the thing is, is if you get the shuttle, the shuttle takes you to the nearest town. So the shuttle takes you to, um, and I think there's like a train station there, and then you get the train in. So in that respect, the excursion was better than doing the shuttle. So it's all about research. If you're looking at how to get around and what to do when you're in port, do some research and see whether an excursion or the shuttle will be better for you. You can get taxis in and you can obviously get your own public transport into these different places. But the thing is, is if, they, if you're delayed and you're not back in time, the ship leaves without you. So to have the assurity of either being on an excursion or knowing that you're going to be on one of the last shuttle buses, because they'll wait for the shuttle bus because that's organized by P&O. So yeah, so Bruges was just a blast. We absolutely loved Bruges. It was, well, beers, waffles, Christmas stuff. They had a lovely big Christmas market in the marketplace um, in the center. And we went to all sorts of different shops. We did a lot of shopping, we bought a lot of chocolate and marzipan and lovely little like Christmassy trinkets. Just like really lovely little independent shops. Obviously there were some more touristy like shops as well, but we were, cause we were walking through Bruges to get to the center, we were able to kind of gauge which shops we wanted to go to and which ones were like the smaller, more independent shops than necessarily the big touristy shop selling, you know, all the, the touristy stuff. We also got some lace because lace is very well known in um, Belgium. We just ate <laughs> a lot. <laughs> what I will do is I will link all of the places that we went to below because I went and styled and saved them on my maps because it would be just great for you guys to go and visit them as well. We had the most amazing waffles um, and it was just off the marketplace and a really nice hot chocolate as well. Just, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning, setting ourselves up for the day. We also had a, lot, a big walk around like the canals, which are very famous um, in uh, Bruges. And we went to the beer wall because of course, I mean, you can't not do that when you're in Bruges. We also had some um, beers to try. Now I'm not a big beer lover, but there were some really nice local ones that were really light, not too hoppy, and I really enjoyed them. Another place to try and go to is the Torture Museum. I know that sounds really bizarre, but it was absolutely fascinating. It was one of those things where I'd heard about it, and then we walked past it, and we were like, shall we have a look, see what it's like? Now, this museum is tiny. It is really small. But my gosh, do they pack in a lot of torture equipment. <laughs> and it was just one of those things that is, you don't necessarily go to Bruges for that. But it was really interesting. <laughs> we are, we are a strange and horrible race. Some of the things that we used to do to each other, let's just say that. Okay, so I've got two more things I want to touch on. The first one is sailaways. Now, whenever you're in a port, you get to experience the sailaways unless they happen at like five o'clock in the morning. Obviously, if you're up at that time, you can do that. Normally, you will leave a port at around maybe five o'clock. Everyone kind of goes out and has a drink and watches the sail away. And I felt that was really special, even though it was really cold. 
I mean, it wasn't raining, so that was a plus. Um, it was cold and it was windy. It was just a really cool experience. There's basically a bar kind of at the back of the ship and there's a pool, which will be lovely in the summer. I would love to go back and try um, it in the summer because there's like some amazing, like comfy, like lounges and things like that. It was just a really cool experience to kind of actually watch us sail away from the port of Bruges. It's something I highly recommend to do, even if it's cold, if it's like a winter cruise like we did and it's rainy. I mean, just go out because there is some shelter so you can shelter and you can still enjoy it. And it's just a really special moment because you're like, OK, that was that. And we actually get to leave. It's like when you when you watch your plane lifting off from the tarmac. It's a bit like that, but a much slower and a much calmer process. And it was just something that was really special and it kind of marked certain points in our trip. We obviously didn't get to see the Hamburg one because that happened at like five in the morning. Um, but we got to see the Bruges one and that was really special. Okay, so the last thing I've got to talk about is actual New Year's. Wow, what, what an experience. I have honestly never had a New Year's like this one. So we got decked up in our finery. I had this amazing gold dress on that I managed to find because I realized before I went on this trip, I didn't have a lot of nice dresses to like wear, like like nice, nice dresses, cocktail dresses, evening dresses. Like I have a lot of like smart casual, but nothing like that. And I found this amazing one from ASOS and it's from a brand called Parallel Lines. I tried to find them everywhere, but they just seem to sell on like, like ASOS and places like that. We went to have a nice drink beforehand, had a nice glass of Prosecco in the crow's nest. And it was just amazing to see everyone dressed up. Like everyone really went to town. I mean, to be honest, because it was a New Year's cruise, everyone pretty much dressed up every night, which was amazing to see. And it's an amazing part of it. When you're on like a longer cruise or it's a summer cruise, sometimes in the evening when it's not a celebration night, people will dress like smart casual. But it was just really nice to see everyone dressed up. And then we had our six course dinner, which was amazing. Now, the thing that stopped me from vlogging completely is sadly, um, my some people in our party got neurovirus, which isn't fun. We were fine and we had no idea what was going on until we came back from our Hamburg excursion. And we were like, mm, not heard from them for a while. <laughs> And yeah, so sadly they had to isolate and so they missed New Year's and they missed Bruges as well because they weren't feeling great still even after that, which was such a shame. So it kind of, the things we were planning to do and I was planning to vlog, it didn't kind of work out the way it wanted to. This is just how it goes, you know, it's one of those things that you get on a cruise ship and you just have to be really vigilant about washing your hands, not touching surfaces. Think like back to COVID. But like that, but with but without the masks. <laughs> but and it was still an amazing evening. And then we went to have a drink. We went to see one of the shows in the theatre, which was really cool. It was like a circus themed show. And then the fireworks. Oh my god. Hamburg love a firework display. As soon as it got dark, there were just fireworks along the whole horizon. And these did not stop until I don't know what time in the morning. So even though there was a lovely fireworks display in Hamburg port, like it didn't matter because everywhere was fireworks. I've never seen so many fireworks in my life. And we got to do the countdown outside, put our coats on, glass of Prosecco. And it was just an amazing way to see in the new year. It was just phenomenal. I highly recommend a new year's cruise. I mean, to, for us, we'll just go away for new year's anytime. <laughs> So there we go, that was our time on Arcadia and it was just a blast. I do highly recommend it, even if you are in your 20s. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye.